If your nib's too slow and your ink won't flow, here's one of the places that you can go. Larry is here to help you through with Mr. Announcer and Cubby too. It's Larry's Fountain Pen Reviews. Once again, stand this time. Once again, we have the fearless Trollantula Frank on here. Frank, uh, the Federalist Pen Trollantula. So, so uh, he's going to. Hi, Janet. <laughs> Hey. hey guys, hi Mia, hi uh, Norm, hi Adam, hi everybody. And the so anyway, back. good. Frank is going to, uh, before we get started, Frank is going to show us a lot of cool stuff. And so I've seen some of his cool stuff. And uh, Frank, I'm going to turn it over to you. Do what you do best. Do what I do best. All right, goodbye. <laughs> Next, no, I'm teasing. <laughs> what is that? No. <laughs> well, Based on uh, a couple comments from earlier today, and of course, uh, trying to get people to see my. Mark! Ah, here he is. Hi. Hello, man. I'm hey. Trying to get people to see my uh, site uh, before it all. I even think Larry's been like, I find it hard to navigate. So I want to take this opportunity to actually share my screen and show you guys how to go to my site. Okay. Everybody can see yeah. it. We're here. Yes. All right. Very good. Let me. That's why Frank was a teacher. Yeah. Very All good. All right. So, yes, believe it or not, I, I do. Uh, I still teach. I have an adjunct class. I teach uh, computers a couple days a week, uh, a couple hours to adults. So, let's go through this. We are screen sharing. Excellent. Welcome to federalistpens.com. You guys know my business card still says federalistpensonline.card. That is my URL from when I first started. So when I switched over to Shopify a couple years ago, I shortened it down to federalistpens.com. Either one works. If you still use the one on the card, it basically tracks over to federalistpens.com. Either one works. You just buy two URLs through GoDaddy and they're happy and you know you pay the rent for them and, and, and then they point it. Uh, you know, this is called DNS and they point it. They point it to the site that they wanted, they wanted to go to, and that's what I have done. Uh, so this is the site. This is my homepage. I got a little blurb up here. You know, I put the latest news up here and all, saying what I have, you know, free shipping on orders $50 or more. Choose from 50 brands, authorized dealer. 30-day no-hassle returns, my toll-free number. Use the messenger button here on the bottom right to chat with me, which you can. It goes through Facebook. I am always $50 uh, or more free shipping in the U.S. But this Monday, I did mention this earlier today. We had a Fort Worth uh, pen meetup earlier. Monday is uh, free shipping day. It's National Free Shipping Day, and a lot of merchants do participate in this. So for Monday, usually it's in the middle of the month. It's usually on a Friday, too, but this time it's a Monday. So this Monday on the 14th, uh, any purchase you do with me is free in the U.S., no matter if it's five hours, five hundred hours, etc., I waive the shipping for the one day in the U.S. only. Yes, sir. A question Hi. about how about overseas shipping? Are you doing that now or not? Or I do overseas shipping. Yeah. And how much? Uh, this site have? this site tells me exactly how much the overseas shipping costs. I ship by USPS International Priority Shipping. So I either put something in a small USPS priority or a medium size. So this can get costly. So I may see one to two international orders monthly. I used to see more right. actually before the postal service got a little greedy with their rates. That's only been the last two, three years. If you guys mm -hmm. remember yeah. for a while there, they weren't that bad. They would ship stuff for like 15 to $20. Yeah. <laughs> now it's like 30 to 40 bucks. Yeah. It doubled, you know? Uh, so I really don't get a whole lot of overseas orders. I don't know how about other U.S. vendors, but between the dollar being strong and some people actually buy stuff overseas. Larry, you've done that too. You've dealt with a couple of overseas vendors. So with that and them being able to ship stuff to us cheaper, most people don't buy from U.S. dealers. They'll do the opposite. U.S. people will actually go to, go to foreign dealers if they can get a better deal. Because by the time it comes here, it might actually be more money. 
<laughs> I'm not trying to railroad my situation, but I'm just stating the fact, you know, uh, some of our vendors, you know, have to pay to get this stuff and then they have to pass that on to us, unfortunately. And before you know it, the pen is like a third higher in the U.S. compared to other places. And you see that a lot. Unfortunately, you do. So I just wanted to put that out there. And uh -huh. that's, that's the reason. We, the, the dealer has no control over that. No matter who the dealer is, how big they are, we have no control over that. We have to okay. deal with the same vendors. We have to buy the product from them. And if they're getting screwed and they have to pay more for it, we're paying more for it. Okay. Okay. Uh, as you see here, I got my free uh, shipping for $50 to remind people. What happens is when you put stuff into the cart, this counts down. You're only $10 away from free shipping. You're only $8 away from shipping. Congrats, you got free shipping, it says. So you can leave this on there. You can close it. If you don't want to look at that, that's fine. My little storefront window here shows up. You and out. you can click on these and see different items. First one, of course, was Robert Oster. We'll get into that. These are my own nibs, in-house nibs that I get stamped. They're Bach nibs. They get made for me. Uh, I sell them as standard box style, fine, medium, broad. Uh, nib grinder, Mark Backus also grinds some of these for me as an architect nib or as an italic stub. We do that, I offer them as well. And some other things. I have Tomoe River on here right now. I've got the SDJR pen, the junior pen, which is actually the pen that's closely resembles the old Esther Book J style. We talked about this before. Number five, Yogo nib, very nice pen. How much does a pen like this cost? The uh, a 60 list. 60, you broke up, 60? 160. 160, okay. 160, yeah. Gotcha. 160, yeah. The uh, Visconti's are next. Uh, I also have the Duraflex demo, the latest model demo Duraflex pen. And when you click on these, you can click on these things. What it does, you can click it will take you right to that page. So I'm going to my Conklin Pens page, clicking on that Conklin Pens icon. And all my Conklin Pens are here. You all Americans, the courage. Larry, I know you love the courage line. They're oh, all there. Yeah. Yeah. The wooden pens, uh, the black, nice the walnut. Very nice. Freedom, you know, all of those things are there. So people are like, you know, how, how to navigate your page. It's actually not that difficult. Uh, they show about 24 uh, items on each page. And if I have more than 24 items in that brand, it just says next page, next page, next page. So it's pretty easy. Then I can go back here to the home page and go back home. I can also click up here at Federalist Pens and go back to my home page. I can search for specific products here. Let's go to Curados. You guys know what these are, the Platinum Curados pens. And it'll search that way. I can use that. It'll go right to the Curados page. I can go to my cart. Of course, I'll tell my cart's currently empty. Close that out for now. Now, Frank, it took us a second uh, the last yeah. time. Can you yeah. real quick show everybody, because then this is going to get to go on the replay. Can you show everybody how to get to where your uh, your deals are? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Your deals, uh, like where I found this Pelican M120, my a closeout. great deal that was yes. on discount. That Yes. Thank you. Thank you <laughs> no, all good. Thank you. We are getting there. So. Yeah. Again, they're there. You can choose by the drop-down menu here. All products, pen brands, and all. Uh, I'm about to have 30 pen brands. I got 29 right now. They're all here. You can click on each of them individually. Uh, paper, ink, pen cleaners, accessories, etc. Uh, my latest blog and newsletters are here. Uh, you have a search here as well. Same as searches up here about me, my history, why I chose the name Federalist Pens and who I am and my background and all that, how to contact me, all here. Again, all 
very friendly, all straightforward. So back to the home page. Getting back to that. So there is my, uh, basically my store window, quote, quote, your shopping window. You scroll down further and this is what we were talking about before. I have some quick links here. You can shop the latest pen uh, specials, uh, the latest new pens, the new products that come out here all in one place. Uh, new products, new specials. The popular stuff is all here arranged usually by best sellers and things like that. And they're all here as well. And again, so I meant by, I said on the bomb, you have multiple pages. You got about 50 or 60 items here to choose from. I think I told to choose like 50 uh, of the top things. And uh, and we go back to the home page. So that is the product specials here, the latest. You come down to uh, what Adam's talking about, my back shelf. This is my closeout page. This is the site that my vendors don't want to know about. Uh, this stuff I'm getting rid of for any and all reasons. Uh, it might not be selling too well. It might be low production. It might be stuff that I can't get anymore. It might be items I don't want to carry anymore. So most vendors want you only to discount 20%, if anything at all. Most of these items here are 20 to 40% off. Like Adam mentioned, I have the 120 Iconic Blue. I have one left. That pen lists for $235. Right now, it is $140. I have a medium left. My Constellation 88 pens, I'm the only U.S. dealer. I have the Celluloid Lyra series pens. They are 150 from 200 So right now, yeah, they're only 25 off. But again, uh, great pens. They actually list for two and a quarter. And I was selling them for 200 And I got them for 150 I sold out of these. That is the Tashi pen I was talking about earlier today. The guys who were on the Zoom earlier about being only $120 because the $193 value includes the two bottles of ink that I am throwing in. You are getting a broad sailor steel nib on a red demo pen for a buck 20. I have one uh, Conklin red nose deck left for $99. This is another great deal. Pretty much half price this is like over 40% off this Pelican red M101 pen, 375 from 685. <laughs> Adam's like, no, no, get that wallet out, man. We're going on. No, <laughs> you have no idea how much I wavered back and forth between <laughs> the two. <laughs> and the funny thing is I like larger pens, but I, I really enjoy using, uh, I have a P200 and I have an M200 and I enjoy both of them. I know these are the same size. Right. Yeah. And actually, when you post the 101, it's actually longer than the 200s. Oh, yeah? It is. Yes, it is. But the, the color on that and the it, the red one, it was it was really neat. And it really just came down to dollars to where I said, you know, I enjoy it. And I really wanted another nib, another mm -hmm. nib size. And I said, I'm yeah. going to go ahead and just grab another one at it. And that's why I went with the iconic blue. Okay. But that red one was so hard to pass up. I was really hoping it was gone. And the 120 was nice because you got a different nib altogether than the regular 200. There, it yeah. looks like it's retro. It looks like the old Pelican style nib. It just has Pelican and script across it. You know, like the old gold Pelicans, but it's steel. But yeah, but it has it that way. Okay. Uh, Aurora Epsilon, I have a deal on that one. I got the one left. Uh, 120th anniversary Conklins. They were from two years ago. I still have a couple left of them, one of each color. So they're a full hundred dollars off. And just some other things here, a BNU 2019 holiday edition pen. I'm two dollars off a Pelican all metal 815 fountain pen. 650 from 850. Cause it's the only one I have left. Larry, go ahead. Yeah. On the Conklin, uh, the anniversary you just showed yeah. right there for 199. Yeah. Right. Are they with the new nibs or are they still the old nibs? No, no. these are the old Bach nibs. Uh, these actually have the uh, Doraflex nibs on. They're okay. the old Bach style Doraflex. And they, they are individually, the same, they're individually they're numbered. The screw in, screw out, right? Yeah, they screw in, screw out. You okay. can swap them with a different nib. You can. Cool, cool. Yeah, because right. you know the newer nibs will fit. They have the same section seating in Good. there. Yeah, All they did was switch out. That, they switched out the nibs. They kept the same seating, yeah. 
What yeah. I think was cool about that is, uh, you know, I like the Bach nib. So, you know, if I want to order another one, I can order the, the what Jovo nibs they have and just uh, have some fun with both nibs. So that's kind of cool. Okay. Very good. So see here, I'm a $400 off, $199 from $295, saving $95. Bucks. Now, you may notice here, if you don't know, some dealers are looking at this and doing this, but I have it. It's called quad pay. Each thing will say here, you know, what the price is, or you can do four interest-free payments of $50 through quad pay. Quad pay is something you set up through Stripe, through your card company. You go through my checkout, and if you're not with quad pay, you can sign up with it. You can sign up it from here. And if you're approved, what will happen is your card company will bill you in installments. They will pay me up front all at once. They do this to whoever uh, dealer works with it. I think there's other dealers that work with it. But it's called Quad Pay, and it's really cool. It helps a lot of people pay through the holidays. And I think for like eight weeks, every two weeks for eight weeks, they will that payment out until it's paid. And it's interest-free. So it's pretty cool. So you want to look into that, that's available. So we add something to cart, uh, red, look at this, red number 71 of 120. They only made 120 of each one. And I have like one of each color. I have a red 71 or I have the orange 57. So I say, okay, add that to my cart. That's added to my cart. I go to checkout. I wanted to show you this because I know some people are used to certain sites or maybe they're not familiar with this one. Again, this is Shopify. This is Shopify's platform. It's the same as a few other dealers, but my uh, site is actually really easy to navigate and know once you know how to use it because I have a lot of products, people, and 50, 50 brands, hundreds of products. It's all there. You just need to do a little bit of fishing and pulling down on the pulling down menus and find it all. Okay, your contact information, you put it in here, you pay through Shopify Pay, Shop Pay, Google Pay, PayPal, or the Quad Pay, like I said, if you set it up that way. You put in the code. And guess what? You put in Larry. Boom. 10% more off. Even though I'm closing this thing out, I have blocked nothing. So, on that note, shh. There are some dealers, as you know, some vendors that don't want us discounting anything. You put the code in, you might see a little less money. Maybe. Wink. Maybe. I have blocked nothing from my discount codes to sum it up. So even if I have something that's half off, yes, I'm losing money. We joked about this earlier. I day. was just going to say, at some of the pricing I see, I'm hoping you're not losing your shirt over this. I stuff. There's things that I want to get rid of and move away from. So I'm willing to lose my shirt on a couple of things. It's, okay. the old, right, it's the old price leader thing they used to call that in retail. Mm -hmm. yeah. You guys know what I'm talking about. It was appliances, yeah. cars, and stuff like that. It's the loss, it's the loss leader, they call it. Well, Frank, you, give, uh, you give the one thing away to uh, make profit on the rest of it. I... Uh, I put in an order this afternoon uh, for that Constellation 88 and a couple of ink samples, and I forgot yeah. to put Larry in. <laughs> oh, man. But that's okay. It was cheap enough. <laughs> okay, good. Catch it next time. It will be there. Yeah. So that is how you basically go through my checkout. Then you can log in. You can create an account and log in, or you can just check out as a guest through any of them as well. You sign up for my newsletter. Uh, not only is it on my blog, but I also... I also send out specials that are unique just to my customers. So I have all these items. Again, really easy to go back to the homepage. I want to show you a couple of the pull downs. You saw there on my banner, it says, congrats, you got free shipping because now I chose something that was over $50. You see it, it's got it right there. You already have free shipping. So this interactive bar actually changes. And these are the kind of ways that Shopify charges its, its vendors, its dealers. You know, they give me a generic uh, platform. I take on all these extra add-ons. Uh, Adam gave me a great compliment. You know, I, I don't bombard you with them. I 
wait about 30 seconds to hit you with one saying, hey, sign up for our newsletter. I give you one. If you're leaving, if it goes up here, it says, hey, you're leaving already? Let me give you five hours off to stay and enter a code. You pay for that. You pay for this one. So little by little, uh, they nickel and dime you with these little apps. And then, of course, they charge you if you do the fulfillment than USPS. I try to fulfill a lot of things through Shopify mail, you know, if possible. It depends on what it is. If there's a lot of items, I'll go through the regular priority medium box or USPS priority small box, you know, depending on how much it is. So I got my blog and my newsletter here. Like I told you guys, I got the search bar. And my latest one was actually September. I do them every other month. I'm actually a little behind right now. I'll get back to that before the holidays are over. Here's my products. Again, pen brands, paper brands. You can scroll down each of these. So the products, pen brands, and just hit the down arrow or scroll down on your iPad. You hold your iPad screen and you push down. And that's how you scroll down on an iPad. And you can see here, and all you gotta do is click on something. Click on Lamy. Again, boom, you're right there to the Lamy page. All my Lamy products. It's not really that difficult. You just have to get used to the idea of looking at this. You'll see the pull down. Shop all collections. Now this is cool. I added this, the very top one, product shop all collections. This brings you icon push buttons of each product and all 50 things are here. And all you gotta do is click on something. Be new. Did I freeze up? No. No, we're good, right? No, we're good. Yeah, I've seen it freeze up. Aurora, let's hit on Aurora. <clears throat> the B new seems to have frozen up. Let's click on Aurora. Okay, so there we go. Congrats, we got free shipping. It still has the thing in my cart, so it knows that. And here's some of the, uh, the Aurora pens. Latest Aurora items. Again, if I want to go back, I can hit my back button up here. I can go back to the products. And again, you'll see they're all here. Bach nibs. And everything's right here, very easy to access. My own exclusive items are here. In here, you'll find the stuff that I've collaborated with other makers or uh, brands that I only have. Okay, so I have the Constellations 88 pens. I have my own uh, Fredless pens nibs, either done custom ground, again, by Mark, or regular ones. You basically pay for the grinding. I'm not charging you any extra than Mark, what Mark is charging me, essentially, for the grind plus the cost of the nib. So I'm kind of breaking even on them, but I'm happy to sell them. Where it gets out, the more of them I sell, the better. Uh, I wouldn't be able to make, I wouldn't be able to sell them any higher than that really because people could buy a nib for the $20, $25 like I have here and then have Mark grind them for about $20, $25. It's not worth me charging another five, ten dollars more for. It's just not. And uh, founding fathers here from Alan Shaw. Alan Shaw Creations, who's a Phil, known Philly pen maker. He helped me. I uh, collaborated with him to make ballpoint pens named after some founding brothers. I have a Madison in black. Thomas Jefferson in blue. I'm showing actually right here the block of what the pen looks like before it's finished. And there it is. There's the Jefferson one after it's finished. The pen has Federalist pens and paper on one side, and it has the signature of the founding father on the other. So Hamilton, of course, is green, color of money. And Washington is purple after the purple heart. What refill do, do you use with those? They use the Schmidt Easy Flow 9000. Okay. That's another thing. I still have Schmidt Easy Flow 9000 broad nib uh, tips. Yeah, I was going to say nibs, tips. People said they're sold out. You can't get them anymore from uh, Yaffa or from Schmidt. I still have a, a good stock of both, blue and black. I also have the mediums as well. As you know, they never made fine. Easy Flow 9000, they came medium and broad. And the latest now is they're only gonna come medium only, but I still have broad. You can find them on the site. If you want broad Easy Flow 9000s, I have them. And that's pretty much how easy it is to shop my site. You can contact me here by going to contact us. 
you'll see here, you'll have my shipping address. You'll get my uh, email, my phone number. Down here on the bottom button, let me move this out of the way. I have the screen to show you guys. Right here, down here is my messenger button. Here I am, continue as Frank, or continue as your name. How can I help you? It's me. Continue as Frank, let me know what you need. We can chat. Right Frank? through messenger. Came through, did those ever come through to you? Which ones? Um, I had messaged you about the uh, Opus 88 and about the Mocha pen, and you hadn't responded, so I contacted you privately. Um, I don't know if you ever got my messages that came through your website or if that problem's been fixed. Uh, no, unless, how long ago was this? Well, I mean, it was was like the day before I, I contacted you on your private messenger. Okay. Um, because I've I've had a few different people I've I've messaged through their uh, business messenger accounts and right. they don't seem to go through for me so I don't know if it's something with me or if it's just a problem with the the messenger but I just know that I had sent you a couple of messages and you never responded so then I no I'm sorry I usually personal. I do try to respond to them yeah if I didn't I didn't get it if I didn't see yeah you. so I I'm, yeah. I don't know if there's a problem if you need to check into that or maybe I could send you a test message here after we finish okay. and see if you get that but you know it's just a little concern about how stable that is how reliable it is yeah certainly. So guys, I hope you enjoyed that. That was uh, FedPens 101, navigating the site, which you can see is actually very easy once you see how yeah. easy it is. Uh, Frank, uh, do you do yeah. collaboration with Robert Oster every year, like uh, exclusive inks? You get exclusive inks uh, every year? Yes, uh, have, mainly because he's my first, I was his first US dealer. So we oh, collaborated, okay. we celebrated. I, so, I, have, I have an idea. And that's where you. all this came about. Yeah, I have these here. Uh, it was actually Doc's recommendation. I'm actually not sure if he's here or not, but it was Doc's recommendation that I do a bundle pack. And I actually, Dr. McCarty, you know, Jim, and I actually, I did that. I, uh, I'm pretty sure it was him. Uh, if I was wrong, let me know. Uh, I think I'm pretty sure it was Jim. It was either Dan or, or Jim. Uh, Dan's here, I see. But, and Dan's got that puzzled look, so I don't think it was him. But anyway. <laughs> uh, Stan, you said you had a recommendation? I, I had an idea for the next year. Uh, scarlet rose color, and you call it, frankly, don't give a damn. <laughs> yeah, well, that's that's where the scarlet, that's where, frankly, scarlet came from. I was oh. going with that. And you guys... Yeah, you guys know Craig. He did the painting for that. He painted Scarlet O'Hara. That's exactly where I was going. Yeah, but my name so, is better. <laughs> the first year was frankly blue. That was right. celebrating Oster's first year in the U.S. Right. Okay. So, uh, so that was that's a really nice blue green, bluish green. You'll see that none of my colors are sheeny and shimmery with the fleck and all, and that's really on purpose. Uh, I don't hate them. I just know that they're not friendly in all pens. So I prefer an ink that works with most pens. So I tell Rob that I want standard inks and I like the variation. I like the color variation. I like the depth of them. I just don't want any, any fleck in them. I do like color verse inks conver uh, conversely. I like color verse conversely, but uh, they do a lot of their colors with fleck. But I prefer that the Oster inks that I work with don't. So that was... Frankly Blue, and Craig recommended Butterfly, and that was that was the painting that we did for the first year. Then we did Frankly Scarlet, Scarlet O'Hara. Frankly Green was uh, last year's. I uh, I told Craig that at first that I was getting a dark green, and I was thinking about Frankenstein. He didn't tell me. He goes, okay, I got you. I was thinking about Frankenstein. Yeah, I yeah. So he took a picture of me when I did my trip cross country on the train to go to the San Francisco Pen Show back in 18. He took that picture of me and he drew Frank Inkstein. Yeah. And if you look at the picture, that's what it's basically saying. Some people say it's like it's saying Frankenstein. He's got an I and the K, very subtle painted next to the ends, in between the ends. So it's Frank Inkstein. And there's more hair on that guy than adult Frank ever had. Adolph Frank has looked that way pretty much since he's about 22, 23. But anyway, <laughs> it was really good. 
And this year I told Rob, it was my turn. I said, I wanted an, I wanted an ink for my anniversary. So we were celebrating my fifth anniversary and hence came frankly fifth. So some people were like, oh, you've done five inks already? I'm like, no, I know it sounds like it's frankly fifth, but it's frankly fifth for the frankly, for Frank's fifth anniversary. All right. So that's that one. And this is a nice sapphire bluish purple that has a lot of nice red. This has a lot of depth to it. This looks different in different nibs. If you use a broader nib, you see blue. If you use a finer nib, you see more purple. Hmm. So it's, it's really good. And now I'm selling the, the four pack. If nobody's ever dealt with my ink from them, you know, they're $18 usually list. I mean, a pen shows I'll sell, I'll sell two for 35. I don't do that on the site, but uh, it's a dollar less. But on my site, I'm selling all four right now for $65. And there is a page just for that. If you go to the Oster page on my site, it says buy the Frankly four pack for $65. So that is like six, $7 off the list. I just linked it into the chat. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, do you have the same bundle in samples? I do samples and my samples are reasonable. They're, they're four bucks for a four milliliter sample. You know, uh, in fact, uh, summer three, summer four, yeah, depending on what they are. I think the oyster are, uh, the oyster might be three. So yeah, you get a four milliliter. I fill that five milliliter vial to four milliliters. It's like pretty much fill it all the way. Oh. So you get a, you get a very generous sample for, the, for that three bucks, you know. The, if the inks are more expensive, then I charge four or five dollars for them. Now, Colorverse does something different. Colorverse does their own samples now. They have a five milliliter teardrop sample that you've probably seen. It's on my site. I had them on there. You can buy a three pack of them or you can just buy them individually. But it comes in their little known Colorverse teardrop in a five milliliter sample, which are pretty cool. Now they're seven each, but if you buy three, it's 20. So that's, that's their deal. So a little bit bigger than my vial, but you know, very good. And that's the site. I definitely wanted to make sure you guys knew how to navigate that. And hopefully that made you feel a little more comfortable about it. And like I said, I know I'm glad I had a chance to show, to do this. What, what I saw on Larry, it shows people here. I know you record it. So people can see how easy it is actually to navigate that site. Uh, the newest stuff that came in, just came in yesterday, are the Esterbrook, Peacock, and Rocky Top. Diamond cast pens. The peacock really pops with all different colors of a peacock. This is the outer presentation box that comes with it. All the feather colors of a peacock. So that's the peacock, different shades of blues, greens, yellows. Purples, really nice. And that's a peacock. And this is Rocky Top, which I actually like. And this I is- I really going, like that Rocky Top, right? Isn't it? Wink. This is going after the sunset, basically, of Rocky Top, Tennessee. And you can see when the sun goes down, the nice amber glow that it has over the valley there. So you have a lot of browns, ambers, oranges, grays and whites in here for the terrain. So these are the oversized pens. Oversized compared to, a, they also make them in standard SD size. This is the standard uh, Rocky Top next to the oversized Rocky Top. Bottom to bottom, you can see that the oversized is, is a little taller. And of course there's more girth. So a much wider pen. And this is the standard SD, like the other ones, like the blueberry and the black and the green, um, the maraschino cherry. You know, so that's in this size. Okay, this one lists for 350. I'm selling it for 280, 20% off. Don't forget Larry. And 
the oversized one is 395. I'm selling for 320. They both use Yovo number yeah, six. Beautiful, they are gorgeous, aren't they? So Definitely. That is them. Uh, wanted to show the comparison. I got a chance to right. earlier. Yes, sir. Right. Uh, are they coming out with that? I uh, heard they're coming out with the Rocky Balboa. Uh, and so there's a lot of boxing and unboxing <laughs> involved. <laughs> the Rocky Balboa. Well, he's got the Monte Grappa Chaos pen. You know, you've seen that. I've seen them in shows. It's the only time I've ever seen them. Uh, it's a gorgeous pen. It's a lot of, you know, jewels in it, you know. But I have seen that. Okay. I know Larry appreciated this earlier. This is a Conklin Brownstone, all American, compared to an oversized Estabrook. So longer and to end a little longer. There's a little bit more girth to the oversized SD. A little more girth compared to the standard SD and the brownstone. Roughly about the same, the same girth. Roughly about the same on these two. So if you like the All-American, you got this. The standard one will do. But of course, there is the oversized pen for both of them. And you guys wanted me to show you the, the difference between a Tessera pen, a Benu, a Tessera, which is that nice teal green one they have compared to a diamond cast. You know, Benu is known for its glitter too, but uh, this is mainly more fleck inside the material compared to diamond cast in these guys. Much more expensive process for these guys. You get a certificate with it. I mentioned this before. This is a company. Uh, it's called Diamond Cast. And they have... It comes with a certificate from them. They're the Diamond Cast company. You get that. That's their logo. Diamond Cast trademark. The patent pending. And it says Diamond Cast is created with real gem quality diamonds that are ethically sourced as reclaimed chips directly from diamond cutters. And that's the certificate you get along with your regular SD paperwork and your cleaning cloth and your spare cartridge and converter and all that. In one of the Esterbrook boxes for these guys. Ken, is that the guy that makes a diamond cast blanks? What? You muted, man. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, I had a little yeah. trouble with mute there. Yeah, uh, Tim McKenzie makes a diamond cast. Does he? Okay. Materials, yeah. Okay. I just put his uh, web address know. in the uh, chat. Good to know. Thank you. Thanks for sharing. Welcome, everybody. I see everybody's joined in. That is the latest things. Uh, anything anybody want me, anybody have any questions? Anybody want me to, to uh, show uh, anything in particular? Or? Frank, that, that pen that uh, replaced or similar to the, the J pen, Esterbrook? Yeah. Uh, how is that in size of the, uh, compared to the original J pens? Okay. I've got about five of those uh, and they're probably not ink. Uh, they're probably not lever fillers, are they? No, no. Uh, the JR pen actually looks really nice when it first, first thing I took it out of the box, I saw this clip, you know, with the ribbing mm -hmm. and the top and it, I just looked at it and I'm like, wow. I'm like, yeah. okay, you have finally paid proper tribute to the J yeah. pen to a point. Yeah. The only thing that surprised people was this ring down here on the bottom. It's very nice, very decorative. But the first guess is, is this a, is this a, uh, you know, a piston filler, you know? Yeah. So it comes out, it is a number five Yovo nib. It's the smaller of the Yovo nibs. The problem is, you can see the Esterbrook symbol there and all. Mm -hmm. 
This doesn't work with the uh, adapter. This doesn't work with the MV adapter. Do you work with the vintage because it is smaller? It's the number five. Only the number six Yovo sections work with the MV adapter. So the JR and the Camden pens don't work with the vintage nibs. Right. All of the SD ones do, whether they're the diamond cast, the oversized, or the regular size. They all work. Let me go grab a couple of vintage SDs, okay? While he's gone, I want to say hi to Mark and Ken and Adam, all of you guys. I popped hey, in here. Tony, how are you? Good to see you all. Hey, Mark. Craig, how are you, man? How you doing? All right? Good. Doing good. Good, man. Good seeing you, man. Good to see you, too. <laughs> For all of you that weren't on the earlier uh, meetup at the uh, Fort Worth uh, meetup, Craig uh, showed us an actual shark's tooth. It was pretty impressive. I got to say oh, that. Oh, I got, I got several. <laughs> he actually pulled them. He, he advertised himself as a as the dental dental shark dentist. <laughs> no, I'm kidding with you. There's another one. That's huge. Whoa. Back. Meg, it's a Meg tooth, right? Right. I got them uh, when you could die for them in uh, Cooper River, right outside Charleston in Blackwater. Uh, when I was in school, we always used to go up to Shark River on a, on a trip. Everybody went up and you would sort them up at the bottom and pull out sharks to eat. Right. Okay. So here in the bottom here is an Esterbrook J, standard J pen from the 50s. Right. Leave the fill. Standard size. Looks like it's a little larger in girth, maybe. I, don't, I can't tell. So you have the, the jewels, you know, in the modern pen as well, you know, the metal jewels in their case. It's honestly just about the same size. It's got the, the top jewel over it. That's about all it's got. Just a little bit taller by the jewel. Uh, Width, size, circumference around, girth, uh, pretty much the same, honestly. Pretty much the same. And here is a SJ, small J. Okay, it's uh, Esterbrook 101. There is the J, the LJ, and the SJ. The Js, the, the SJ and the LJ both have less diameter. The J has more girth than them. The LJ is shorter. Ladies. It can be, mm -hmm. but, uh, but the little J, ladies J, little J, whatever they really intended the L to stand for, an LJ. So we got that. And then the SJ uh, is basically uh, is the short one. And then there's an LJ, which is basically the same size as the regular J, but less girth. That's the difference between the three J's. The SJ is the shortest one. The LJ, the long J, short J, long J, same length across, just less girth. And that's the difference between, you can see it right there in the caps between the small J and the regular J. The LJ has the same thing. The truth is, if you're ever replacing these jewels, the end jewels are used in the yeah. caps of both the LJ and the SJ. Only the big J needs that larger one. Uh, Frank, one of the things, uh, I don't know about the rest of you all that have some of these uh, uh, these vintage J pens. One of the things that attracted me to these pens is the just the, the material, the way it looks. I don't know about the new uh, the new ones. Are they just basic resin? Or do they oh, yeah. still they still have that design in it. Look at it's got yeah, they like have, they have awesome designs in them, but yeah, but they're, but they're but they're but they're resin. Yeah, yeah, not the you know the special uh, formula Bakelite they were using for these. You know, you know at that point, you know, which is actually quite durable. If you ever repair Esther Brooks, you'll see that they're pretty forgiving. You know, yeah. they're 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 really good workhorses. They're even today, they're great to write with. Resacking them is not that difficult. It's what I started doing, repairing. I 
I started selling Esther Brooks and, and wherever and, you know, third tier pens, which I actually liked wherever's and stuff like that. Uh, then I got into uh, other things. I got into TD repairs and snorkels and, and uh, skylines and all, which I like to, I like the Everstrap skylines. Uh, I'm not big on repairing uh, Schaefer Vax. I'll still send them out. Uh, I'm, I'm getting used to repairing uh, Parker Vax on my own. But for a while there, I was sending them out too. And uh, I still sell vintage from time to time. I try to keep most of the vintage that I buy, but I still sell some from time to time. time. Uh, honestly, the, the site has basically taken up so much time. I really don't get the chance to even post about my vintage for sale and all that. So that's basically where I'm at with the one man pen store. That's where I started. You guys know I was selling vintage on eBay and on the forums, on the pen forums. And then uh, I was selling at the Philly pen show. I was just doing one table. I was actually volunteering at the Philly pen club table a lot. And in return for your time there, you, you could sell stuff. And that's when I got the idea, you know what? I think I'm going to, I'm going to try doing retail. Cause I explained to Larry, my brother and I, we, we do other hobby things. We do other hobby shows. I've been, my brother and I have been selling toys since we were teenagers because our dad's in, in the old toys and all. So we've been going to hobby shows and stuff like that. We sell die cast. We, we're, we're, we're kids. We, we still have Corgi's Hot Wheels and Matchbox cars of any era and, and we sell them. So I was used to getting tables from vendors, how to deal with them how to price things, how to deal with other colleagues around, around you, you know? So my transition to jumping into, into pen shows was pretty easy. I knew what I was getting into to a certain point. I learned a lot of different things. I've had, a, but I've had a lot of fun. I've always been a hobbyist at heart because I've always treated everything as a hobby, even though I've always found a way to make money with my hobbies. And that's how I treat them. I'm still doing that. I have a question about the Estabrook. Um, some time ago, I bought um, Estabrook Slim. It was a lilac color. And it's a little bit smaller than the regular Estabrooks. Do you know, are they going to do any more of those? I think that was just kind of a limited edition when I bought it. Was that from Kenro? Um, I can't remember who I bought it from. But th it's this one. It's just slightly smaller than the uh, the regular Estabrook. Yes, okay. That, was, called, that yeah. was a special edition from Kenro. Yeah, they did, they did a pen that was even smaller than the regular SD that they did. Yes, like the SD Slim. Okay, that's it. I haven't seen anything more about it since that one. Okay, I, I really like this one. Yeah, yeah, because you can go to the Kenro site and see these things, you know, yeah. You see the same things that we do. You can okay. go to Kenner, KennerIndustries.com and check this stuff out. Yeah. Hey, Frank, is uh, Ken Rosto looking into making the MV adapter for that new LJ that you suggested when they first released it on Instagram? I recommended that they, uh, I told them they had a winner. I told them to make a number six larger one that would take the adapter and all. And they said, yep, we're working on it. Excellent. So they're going to make the larger uh they're going to make the larger cool SD. I don't know if they're going to call it the SR instead of the JR, but they're going to call it the, uh, it's going to be the new SD. It's going to look just like that, but it's going to be the bigger one. And it's going to take the number six nibs. So yes, it will take the adapter. Thanks for pointing that out, Mark. So yeah. What else? Uh, I think you guys have pretty much seen the latest. I did get the Conklin uh, Doraflex demo pens. I do have the Rainbow Crescent pens. Finally, they're all metal. They're pretty neat. A big hit right now is the uh, Laban Skeleton Rainbow Pen. Hang tight again for a minute. You got to see that one. Mark, while we're waiting, how was your experience working in the store? Oh, it was a blast. It was a good time. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a good size. So, you know, you really can't be there basically alone sometimes um um but yeah it, it was a it was a fun time oh good i was wondering you know you don't really have excuses for not being able to go shopping for your you know your family and stuff because you're there in the mall anyway yeah well with the size of the store you know they allow you by by law 
the capacity limit is 49. But, you know, with the, with the virus, but even if you reduce it down to 40 and then they allow you like the 30 percent, you know, yeah. it's not even you're still allowed 12, 12 people. But across the across the way, one of the stores, a, a shoe store, is half one, yeah. size, they were only allowed, they were allowing like 13 people by yeah, law. So we could probably get 20 yeah. people in there without yeah. any problem. Wow. I mentioned that earlier. We're not about 24 people in the, in, in, in the room. They told me it's like half. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So we could That's definitely great. do an event. Uh, okay. This is the latest from Laban. This is their skeleton series. So they do an overlay of a Debo acrylic pen. Question, Larry? Yeah, question. We're looking on your site right now. It says it's a Bach nib, but it doesn't show any nib sizes. On the so it's, uh, it's a stainless. Now, depending on the nib, uh, the generation, this is going to be uh, the Yovo. I could just tell by the crest. You guys know the crest of a Yovo nib. They got that nice little florette pattern going up by their end on the other side. So this is this is their Yovo. This is their Yovo okay. nib. So do, do they come in a broad nib as well? It's known to do either Bach or Yovo depending on on the pen on the pen line. This is their, this is their skeleton. Yeah. A lot of really nice variation. Yeah, that and should you be can swap out the nib. Right? What's that, man? You can swap out that nib, can't oh, you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. They're very easy. Yeah. They swap right out. Put another one in. I got to unscrew the converter first to get to that. But yeah, but unscrews right out. They will unscrew it out. I've got to say, everyone I've ever talked to this bought a Laban has been extremely pleased with it. Laban's are really nice pens. You know, they're they're made in Taiwan, good quality. They've always used German nibs. They're uh, they either use Bach or Yovo, depending. The original pearl pens uh, that that Christmas uh, set is based on. See now, Frank's got to run away again. But there is a Christmas pen called a Box of Serenity. You might have seen it. It's white. It actually looks like it's bone, and it's got mother of pearl in the center. Check on cub. It's a Christmas set. Comes uh, the white pen. It has holly green ink and nice dark green ink. It has a pin. It has a hat pin, a Santa hat pin with an L on it. Great if your name starts or ends with L, your last name, first name, like in our case. But anyway, um, so you got that, and uh, you have a greeting card too. So if you give it as a gift, you can basically address it to your loved one. But it's called the Box of Serenity, and that lists for one sixty nine. Are you all right? <laughs> you're muted, Larry. You're muted. muted. Okay, I'm a mute. Yeah, look at that. Okay. <laughs> Thought you were making faces there. What's going on? What happened? <laughs> I was just tripping on Tony. That's all. <laughs> so I got a question. Tony's fault. For a second. Tony aggravates me so I can act like an idiot. Oh man, <laughs> tough crew, tough crew. But that's a gorgeous pen. You had a question, Dan? Yes. Um, uh, this is a newbie question, so you have to forgive me. Okay. Uh, as as I as I understand, almost all pens are either uh, have an ebonite or a, a plastic feed. Sometimes I can look at a pen and say, you know, well, this is obviously plastic. Some of them are even clear. But um, I, I understand that a, a quality pen is going to uh, have an ebonite feed. But when in the uh, on the food chain of pens, when you look at them, when do you know they're ebonite or not? Because a lot of times the feed isn't described when a pin is described. The nibs are, uh, but not the feeds often. Okay. The rule of thumb is, you kind of answered the question yourself. The, the rule of thumb is if it's a quality 
component quality feed section, mm -hmm. you know, uh, if they're, or if they're, if it's made by them in house, they're going to say so. Mm -hmm. And if it is ebonite, they're going to tell you it's ebonite. If they don't talk anything about the feed, assume it's plastic. It isn't, isn't the plastic a little shinier? Ebonite's a little more of a matte or dull. Yeah. yeah. Can be. But, yeah. but when you're looking at a photograph, you can't always see that. Once it's in your hand, you can. But like a lot of the pins now I'm seeing are, are stainless steel. Uh, a lot of the steel nibs are on the lower end pins uh, or in the middle range pins. But when do they have ebonite, ebonite feeds too, the stainless steel pins? More than likely, they're going to be plastic, to okay. be honest with you. I believe Leonardo, uh, uh, it depends. Leonardo Grand and Leonardo Zero Grande have stainless steel nibs and ebonite feeds. Hmm. Yeah, it depends on the maker, depends on uh, the components made. You know, like I said, a lot of them make them in house, some of them don't. It really depends. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, Dan, they usually will, in the description, they usually will tell you if it's an ebonite feed. Yeah. If you're in every any question, I would uh, message the seller and ask the seller first. Uh, yeah. You know, with that ebonite feed, you're going to get a, a wetter uh, uh, riding experience with it. Mm -hmm. That's what I've learned through it. Mm -hmm. But uh, you you can find some plastic feeds on higher end pins as well. They're they're not necessarily going to be ebonite, so you need to check for that. If mm -hmm. ebonite's your game, then you know you always need to. Ask the messenger, uh, whoever the seller is, is this ebonite or not? Um, as, as a general rule, I mean, should should you just steer away from plastic feeds? No, I don't think so. I don't not think really? so. Not me. It, okay. you know, so readily available now. They're the ones you mainly see out there. So no, there's. Like, there's know, like I said with before, them. and I'll say it again. I, you know, personally, I don't give a darn. But uh, mm -hmm. uh, everybody's different. You know, some people like this. Some people like that. You know, it's whatever is going to fit you, whatever is going to suit you, not what it suits anybody else, man. It's your pen. It's your thing. Okay. Thanks. It's your money, too. Uh, uh, Ken just posted on the chat, uh, you can order Ebonite feeds for any pen, just about any pen. From, uh, what is it, from nibs nibs.com? Yeah. Okay. No, it's Flexible Nib Factory. Oh, the guy who machines, he makes all kinds of stuff out of ebonite. He, he'll make special collars and feeds for all kinds of nibs. So, mm -hmm. Okay. I see you posted that. Good. Thank you. Thanks, Ken. Now it's quiet. All right. quiet. Quiet. I pulled. I'm sorry. Everybody went like, damn. I have that effect. On I'm, I talk too much as it is. They're all like in pin shock here. Like, I, I talk too much as it is. I try to keep myself shut no, up. You keep on talking. That's the only thing that's going to happen. Talk, talk, talk. No. Larry, we're at the hour point. How long do we want to go? Do what? We're at the hour point. How long are we going to go? Continue. Uh, let's continue another 10 minutes and they will say au revoir. Okay. Because I've got to give Kevin. Good. Let me. How's Kevin? Okay, sounds good. How's he doing? How's up Cubby down, doing? Up and down. That dementia, you know, it's just like yeah. a human. It's just up and down. You know, has he eaten at all yet? Not yet. He hadn't eaten all day yet. He and I are both worried yeah. about him. So yeah. Yeah. Sorry. What about Three Oyster Inc.? I've noticed that. The Inca, Adam, you have any familiarity with that? I haven't used I any love of three them. I haven't gotten around I to them at all. Yeah. Adam, have you gotten around to the Mont Blanc ink? Uh, I have all of my writing samples done for Mont Blanc. Um, I believe I should be hitting uh, a lot of them next, you know, through next year because I'm still going to do a video every day. Uh, I. People think making the videos takes time. Finding the inks takes time because I went searching after a whole bunch of uh, their inks that they don't really, you know, that are harder to get a hold of now. So they were just limited and out there. And I don't know that I'm going to go through that sort of headache in the future. <laughs> hmm. But, uh, 
Yeah, I'm getting to Mont Blanc. It's like I'm getting to the Orochizukus. I'm... There's just so many inks. Yeah. Getting back to uh, Tony there with Three Oysters. Three Oysters actually is a really nice ink. Uh, I do sample it. Uh, they make three uh, lines of ink. They have a standard line with four colors, uh, scarlet, black, cobalt, blue, and a green. They have uh, a series called I Color You, which is like the colors of Seoul. They call it Seoul, South Korea, where they're based at. So they have them, different colors there in the urban area. And then they have like uh, a tasty line of inks that are different uh, names. And the purple gray, uh, is actually a very nice color. That's actually my favorite of them. But I do sample all of Three Oysters inks, and you could find them. I actually have 16 uh, different uh, ink uh, brands, and I sample 15 wow. of them. So like I mentioned about my, my samples earlier. You can definitely find them on my site. Again, I showed you, you, you pull down the pull-down navigation, yep. you go to inks, you'll find them. We have something for everybody, basically. <clears throat> Uh, 50 brands. Uh, you saw my stuff at the mall uh, a couple weeks back, and that wasn't even everything. That was uh, just about most of my pens, but I still have a lot. I have a lot of paper and ink. I have a lot of extra because that's what normally sells at shows. So I have a, lot, a good stock of paper and ink, and I still have a lot of that at home. So at my my store, there was like about maybe 80% of everything I have. Uh, still have a lot of stock of paper and ink, but yeah, you saw, and I have a lot, and I, that's about six or seven tables worth of stuff at a pen show. I don't even bring a lot of stuff to a pen show. I, I like doing four, four tables at a pen show. I have done five, but I find it unmanageable, and I've paid for it a couple of times with theft, you know, so I'm very careful about what I bring and what I do at pen shows, uh, unfortunately. Could do I could I see myself doing five tables moving forward now that I have all these brands because I have grown so much I have gained like eight or nine brands this year despite I might I might run with five tables I might but I may have to consider uh, bringing someone else with us to make sure that I have security or not bring I'm not putting good stuff on the table there's different ways to approach that and I'll, I'll probably have to find the best one you can get some kind of display and, tables or display rack type things with glass that might protect from quick connectors. It's, it's tough when you're trying to haul stuff in, 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 a, in, a, in a minivan, you know, and you have all that stuff, you know, it's, yeah, it's different when you're not actually a brick and mortar and you don't have that stuff with you all the time, you know, you're just buying that for those 10, 12 shows a year you're doing, you know. And you got to store it all the time in between the but, shows. Yeah, if I did have that. And pop-ups are fun. I mean, I, I do them more when things are normal. But right now, it might just be once a month until we see what happens, you know. I did want to bring a couple things. That's a good segue for that. I'm back at my pop-up next weekend, the 18th, 19th, and 20th. Uh, it's at Morristown Mall, Morristown, New Jersey, Eastgate Shopping Center. Uh, just off exit 4, New Jersey Turnpike, 12 miles uh, east of Philly. Uh, if you order on my site by the 18th, by Friday the 18th, that will pretty much guarantee you Christmas delivery. I can't get any cl uh, closer than that because we know uh, the mail's been a little sporadic lately. So I, I do want the week out to make sure it gets there. Uh, don't forget your discount code, Larry. At checkout to save 10% more as I showed you earlier. And Monday, this Monday, the 14th, is National Free Shipping Day. In the U.S., we'll be I've always participated. Monday. <laughs> you order something on Monday on my site and other sites, you could get free shipping if they participate. And that's free U.S. shipping only, U.S. shipping. <clears throat> but if it's five hours, I always do free shipping, $50 or more anyway, but if you order something for five bucks, it's ship free. So that's what free shipping day is all about. Try not to hurt me too much with that. Well, we were gonna, <laughs> we, we wanted to know if Mark could come down here for, uh, for uh, lunch if you just ship Mark for free. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Don't, don't order a $2 cartridge pack and then I have to, I have to pay $6 to send it. Yeah, but you'll, you'll probably get lost in shipping. <laughs> but I, I just thought, Frank, if you, you know, I know that you're going to have this next uh, mall deal here uh, next week. 
Uh, had you thought about, since you, you sell a lot of toys, maybe incorporating the toys? You have so much space, uh, you can move some more. Nah, it's, for, it's just too much. It's, it's just too much. Yeah, I know, but it's just too much. I have I have dreams of having a, a watch uh, business on the side so I can bring my oh, watch over there. Oh, there you go. You're going to have us as a full, very uh, different a full jewelry store, yeah, between pens and watches, yeah. Speaking of that, are, are, is something happening over the weekend at the store? Uh, I did mention that earlier. Yeah, good point, man. Uh, I do have a vendor coming. Uh, I have a vendor coming uh, next Saturday. I have Robert Rosenberg of Halpen. Uh, he is the original creator of Kenro. Uh, he created some brands back in the 90s and all. He created Estabrook. He revived Estabrook back before he sold it to Kenro. He uh, revived the Conklin pen name back in the 90s before Yaffa bought it. And now he's working with LeBeouf Pens, which is an old brand, and he's working with Sensa. You might have seen Sensa. Sensa is the one with that nice pat the gel grip. They make fountain pens now as well as ballpoints. He will be there showcasing his brands, and I will probably be acquiring those brands and working with him after that moving forward. He called me up because we're both in Jersey. Figured he didn't have to travel. He's like, I'd be interested in coming to your event. He saw how, how good it was and all. He's like, I'd like to to come check it out. I said, sure. And then we agreed he's going to come Saturday. So that should be good. And then maybe on uh, January, once mid-January, which would have been the pen show weekend, my wheels are turning. I've told a couple of people that I'm thinking about getting some uh, pen artisans in the Philly area and maybe we'll do some kind of quote show. We'll work on that. So there's some there's some things going on. I'll see how it goes. See if it, if it continues to do well, I'll keep running it once a month until we get back to a pen show, which hopefully will happen uh, next summer. Uh, I'm confident DC will occur. I'm hopeful for things in June. You know, there's Raleigh and there's St. Louis. St. Louis, St. Yep. Louis, St. Louis is planning to go forward. Possible. Yep. Possible. You know, I... I forget. Can you remind me? Are you normally in a store location, or are you most normally online? And at I'm shows? online only. I'm online only. Okay. I'm home based. My shipping address is actually a UPS store, okay. which is great because they are essential. They never closed. Like through this pandemic, it was business as usual for me. If we shut down again, rest assured, you order through me, stuff gets sent. I receive items. I ship items. I jump in my car, I mask up, I go to my store, I drop stuff off. I'm hoping there's not a shut, another yeah. shutdown. Small business can't take it. Yeah, I, I, know. Agree, yeah. I know. But at least I have that going for me. I uh, made the right moves with that. I'm staying online only. I'll do these pop-ups. I'll go to all the shows that I can. And I'll do venues and specials from time to time. That's Basically, I've always done that. I, I like having vendor events. I've done them in the past. They've always worked out. I had Lamy a few years back when uh, Filofax USA ran them. We had a we have a Dave, we had a Dave and Buster's event. If you know about Dave and Buster's, I actually had a party there for the Philly oh. Pen there then uh, with Lamy. And that was a fun time, wasn't it? Even Buster's event. Oh, we I'm had a blast with that. that you guys know I'm the I'm the Philly hub master for uh, Pelican Hubs. I run the Philly Pelican Hub. I give away a pen. I give away a Stola, which is their nice everyday cartridge converter pen, which if you've never tried a Stola 3, they call them Stola 1, 2, 3, ballpoint, rollerball, fountain is the 3. And the Moose is Tony a, from last year. Only $50. It's a great pen. Yeah. Great everyday carry pen. And that Moose Tony was supposed to be the last year's uh, yeah. ink given away. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it should have been this year's ink given away. Exactly. Yeah. We never got any extra for that because they, they knew right. they knew by the spring they weren't going to do it. And they told us it's not going to happen. Yeah. But the ink's nice. It's a, a nice slate gray. It's actually graphite. It's actually pencil. If you like pencil point, it's close to that. There's a little bit of blue gray tinge to it. And the pen is gorgeous. The pen's got that nice glitter. It's a gorgeous set. I have that in sets and I have it in individual pens too. And individual ink. Hey Frank, maybe we can do the Dave and Buster's uh, event again uh, for for another uh, for another time this year. If things, yeah, you never know. We got to we got to back to normalcy first, Mark. 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I know. Looking forward to a pen share, like we said. Oh. I'm confident DC is going to happen, maybe Miami in July, which is a hike for some people, but it's actually a nice show. And, uh, and hopefully we'll have the June shows too. I don't think anything's going to happen prior to that. Dallas is a long time away, so hopefully we can get things all resolved. And you think you'd ever come down to Dallas? I'm planning on it. I was actually thinking about it this year. I'm going to plan on it for next year. We'd like to see it. We'd like to see it. Well, we're we're, we're about wrapping up here, aren't we? Well, real quick, real quick. If he does come to Dallas, that's where you're going to find me, in his nest. And you might meet Andrew. Excellent. And I'll see my solo, too. Yay, I do a double shot of my yes. baby's love. Yeah. There, there you go. Go. If Frank goes to Dallas, I'll go to Dallas. There you go. Yahoo. Hi, Mr. Craig. Bring your well, shirt. Go. Yeah. Yeah. I'll look for you. Bring hey, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks. Hey, now it's time to say goodbye to all my pin company. Eh. Well, what do y'all think? Y'all Thanks for your time, today? folks. It's been great. Thank you. Don't forget Thank Monday. You. All these deals. Right. Much, Let's freak out. I know we Tony and I'll be there Monday, won't we, Tony? Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. Everyone have good holidays. You too. Guys, you all be safe. Be safe. Right. Good. Thank you, Larry. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Bye. And we'll right. see you next yeah. time. Guys. Take care, right. guys. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.